Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Are you high? What? No, I'm not high. What? You are high as a kite. I'm not high. Let's go. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And here we are. Well, there's bad news. We're all over it. Oh, yes. Somebody did the accounting. And they found uh, the number of layoffs announced last month. Do you know what the number is? Down to the single digit. They got it down to a specific number. Do you know how many layoffs were announced in January? 241,749. 241,749 layoffs in the month of January. Unbelievable. Says here in the Los Angeles Times, jobs disappeared at an accelerating pace in January. As a dismal holiday shopping season brought more gloom to the nation's battered retail sector, according to a report released, and uh, that was on Wednesday. And a fresh round of layoff announcements brought little hope for a quick turnaround. U.S. companies announced 241,749 layoffs last month. This according to Chicago employment firm Challenger, Gray, and Christmas Incorporated. Christmas, is that a name? Are there people named Christmas? I have a plumber named Noel, so I guess it's possible. Hmm. Says here, this is the highest one month layoff total since January 2002. And 222% higher than the 75,000 job cuts announced in January a year ago. It was the fourth highest total since the firm began tracking layoff announcements in 1993. Just this week, department store operator Macy's said that in addition to the 11 stores they're closing, they plan to cut another 7,000 jobs in anticipation of a sluggish retail environment this year. PNC Financial Services Group said it planned to cut 5,800 jobs. Airplane maker Hawker Beechcraft Corporation said 2,300 employees would lose their jobs before the end of the year. And may, more layoffs may be coming. Wow. Just goes on and on and on. Uh, the firm that released this report said, unfortunately, there is no light at the end of the tunnel yet. Even if the stimulus package is successful... It could take months to make a noticeable impact on the employment picture. In December, the government reported the nation's unemployment rate hit 7.2%. Last week, the number of workers filing for unemployment benefits hit an all-time high of 4.78 million. Holy cow. New York had the highest number of announced layoffs with almost 48,000, in part due to cutbacks in the financial services industry. That's... Can we imagine what's happening in New York? <laughs> oh, baby. Now, uh, as you know, we continue to take your pulse as things continue to spiral downward to see how bad things are getting. And um, I know that many times when we do these shows, we talk to people who thought they were set, thought they were safe, thought this wasn't going to happen to them. Then it happens to them. So we ask you the question that we ask you fairly frequently nowadays. How bad 
is it? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Now with shorter commercial breaks, fewer commercials, and more of your annoying telephone calls. That's right. We're taking the calls faster, and that means even you can get in at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. How bad is it out there? Victor on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Oh, man, I got to tell you, man, it's getting really tough out here. Do tell. Just today, we cut another 400 people as opposed to the uh, 3,000 we let go last week, and... uh, I'm one of the very lucky few that still has a job just because I started to learn how to do everything else that goes along. But uh, even I don't feel safe. What kind of business are you in? Uh, I work for a company that produces video games. Uh Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, times are tough. Uh, People aren't buying their kids games, and so we're losing money left and right. And uh, things are getting tough. Wow. I don't even know if I'll have a job by the end of the month. And do you have a plan B if you lose your job, Victor? Uh, currently, I got a year's savings thanks to you. I'm, uh, you know, follow your rules diligently, and uh, I'll be all right for a year. But who knows when I'll get another job? The way things are going. Yeah, I understand. I don't expect that the economy will go more than that, uh, oh. but uh, it's unprecedented, so we don't know for sure. Oh, it definitely, man. It's it's really sad. I've lost a lot. I know a lot of friends lost their job today, and they're just. You know, kind of wondering what they're going to do because they weren't smart enough to put money away like I was. Boy, oh boy. Thank you for that, Victor. 1-800-5800-TOM. Alan, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, it's me, Alan. Uh, Man, let me tell you, the situation right now is bad. I've been working for about a month and a half without getting paid. What kind of company do you work for? I'm a furniture finisher down here in Culver City. And uh, don't you demand uh, deposits? Don't you demand uh, money up front before you start your work? Well, here's the thing. I get paid under the table. I do. Don't get me wrong, but it's just, I mean. Well, if you get paid under the table, you may never get paid. Well, true, but it's, I mean, he'll pay. I know he'll pay. That, I know that he'll pay. I hope you're right. Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Great. Good. Hey, you know what? I know everything's going bad, but, you know, as long as we keep talking about it, you know, isn't that just helping out, uh, making the, our economy worse, making everybody think, oh, God, what, are we gonna, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then not want to go out and shop and spend? I mean, if we, I, I know media has to bring it up, and I know media has to talk about it, but if they cut back, well, don't you think that'll help something, somewhat a little bit? Well, first of all, let's start with this. Your president yeah. and mine, Barack Obama, Today, he used the words crisis and catastrophe. Oh, he did. I didn't hear that. To describe what's going on here. Yeah. In other words, ah. if we don't pass the stimulus package, a crisis could become a catastrophe. Yeah. That's what he said. Uh, well, you know, if that's what he said, that's what it is. And that's, you know, it, it, you know I guess that's the way it's going to be. So. Should I be Pollyanna? Excuse me? Would you feel better if I was Pollyanna about it? Uh, no, no, I don't want you to be Pollyanna. I want you to talk about what what's going on. But, but there isn't there a time and a place or a point that we we should we should stop or, or pull back from talking about it? Uh, uh, yeah, when it's not true anymore. When it's not true. Well, okay. So, okay. Well, you know, I I don't know. It's just just a, a, an opinion that I had. You know, that uh, I was thinking about. I mean, maybe the problem has been that we haven't been honest enough about it uh, over the course of time. That keep, could be true, keep in mind, the former president was telling us we were not in a recession. Yeah, that's true, too. And uh, <laughs> Sean Hannity is still telling people we're not in a recession. Yeah, yeah, go figure that one, right? So, uh, <laughs> what does that tell you? Yeah, well, it tells us we're in a recession. We need to do something about it. All right. Thanks a lot, Tom. Michael, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Want to know how bad things are? How bad is it out there? Gabe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. 
All right, here's the story, man. It's pretty bad for me, too. The past six months, I've been hired, laid off, got another job, laid off, and just this past month, I got another job, and my boss is really kind of screwing me because he knows, you know, that I'm, I'm not going to quit. You know, I need the work. We're busy, and I'm working a hell of a lot of overtime. But he's not paying me any money over the eight hours. But now, what you know? ra- now? What radio station do you work for? Oh, I don't work for a radio station. Oh. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm actually working as a carpenter right now, and uh, it's surprising to me that we're busy. You know, I'm working. I mean, I worked over at LAX the other night for I worked a 19 hour shift, no overtime, man, no overtime at whatsoever. You know, and and you know, I'm I'm afraid to say, you know, hey, man, you know. What's the deal? Because I'm afraid he's going to lay me off because he's got, you know, a line of people at the door waiting for a job, you know? So it's like, it's like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to, you know, just bend over and take it? Or am I supposed to stand up? And well, say your choices are find another job and go to it or take it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, I, I started going back to school, you know, because the economy is so bad. I figure no, there's no money to be made. Might as well educate myself. So I'm going back to school, and you know the jobs are sinking, but the price of school and the price of books is just as just as high, even higher than it was before. Well, you should have gone to school before. Yeah, I guess so, man. <laughs> Thank you for the call, Gabe. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. We take your pulse every now and then to find out how bad are things out there. How bad, Mike? On the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey. Um, okay, uh, uh, I bought my house about a couple of years ago, and I bought it for five forty. Uh, I paid it down to four hundred thirty uh, in about two years, and now it's worth right about how much I owe. So I'm not upside down. It owes like I, it's worth about four thirty to four fifty. Um, I have a five-year interest-only loan at 6.625, and um, what do you think I should do? Should I keep it this way, or should I sell it? Well, 6.625, do you have bad credit? No, I have well, then uh, like you, about 750 score. Then you should be able to refinance, I would think. Okay, you think I should? I can get like a lower rate than that right now on a, a thirty-year fix? If your credit is good. Okay. How much equity do you have? Uh, not much. Uh, I used to when I first bought the house, but now I think I'm even. Like if the house is worth what I owe. But is that uh, but, so? You have no equity at all, even though you've been paying on this house. Maybe, yeah. Even though I paid about one hundred thirty thousand, but. It's all gone just from the uh, depreciation in wow. the last two years. Well, it's worth a try to find out. That's a high interest rate because okay. uh, most interest rates I'm hearing about are below 6%. Okay. So no. if your credit is good, your FICO scores up over 700, I would at least make a phone call. Well, it's... Now the economy is so bad, so I'm trying to... I mean, I like my payments, it's, even though it's interest only. But it's two thousand three hundred dollars, I think, a month. Well, you're paying a lot of interest. Yeah, but on a thirty-year fix, it's, the payment is going to go a little bit higher, won't it? Depends on how low you can get the interest rate. Yeah. So you think I should look into refinancing? You should at least look into it. Okay. You don't. What about like if the next year the house prices go even lower than that, and I'm really stuck with a higher payment. I mean, I'm... Well, I didn't say to go for a higher payment. I said, find out what your options are. Okay. I mean, fi- good, find out. Don't just do nothing. Yeah, that's true. All right. Okay. Can you take me out Kobe style? Yes. Yes, All I right. can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. How bad are things? Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Mike, how's it going? Great. Love your show, man. Very entertaining. Thank you. 
But uh, I actually was pretty mad when I heard the topic today. I, I just, I got two questions for you. Do you think it's helping the economy with what the topic is on your show today? I think te- I, I happen to believe that telling the truth is always helping. Uh, I I disagree. I, I think that you think I should lie. Oh, wait, let me understand. You think I should lie? No, I don't think you should lie. I just don't think you should do this topic. Anymore. So you think I shouldn't talk about the one thing people are talking about more than anything else? Because I think it brings. I think it makes matters worse. But aren't I mean, people already? Know. Wait a minute. Aren't people already talking about this? Sure. Every day. Yeah. It's I the first it. thing everybody talks about. Now what you're telling me to do is to take the thing people are most concerned about and that they talk about the most and not talk about it. I think, it's, I, I think you should actually make more positive out of it. Talk about something positive. Well, what is, po- what is positive right now about the economy? Not a hell of a lot. But I should make something up. Uh, it, sure, if it's going to help the economy. So I not? should lie. I should uh, fa- fabricate something. If it's going to help the economy, why not? So I should lie to help the economy. You know, should the president be doing that too? Should he be lying? <laughs> uh, the president called uh, it a crisis yeah, yeah, today. It depends on, it depends on how the the president called this a crisis that could turn into a catastrophe. Now that isn't very positive. Do you think he ought to be lying about the economy too? No. Oh, but I should. Why not? What's going to well, 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 If the president doesn't have to lie about it, why should I? I think mean, if, if, if you could just get more positive... So the president should tell the truth and I should lie? No. You just said that. If, if, if you can lie and, and help the economy... So I should lie to help the economy. Why shouldn't the president do that? Well... Uh, maybe maybe he should if he can get away with it, if it's going to help the economy. Well, uh, President Bush lied about the economy. President Bush said that we were not in a recession for the last year of his presidency. Did that help the economy? I, I, don't, even want, I don't even want to talk about President well, Bush. Well, you're going to have to because <laughs> I, I'm pointing out to you that he said we were not in a recession. He lied about the economy, and I'm wondering if you think that helped the economy. Yeah, probably not. I, I can't imagine it helping the economy when we're in this situation. Well, but now, so why would my lying about the economy help? Because you got more listeners than Bush. <laughs> right. And uh, now Sean Hannity uh, is saying we're not in a recession, even now. Is that helping the economy? No. No. So don't you think telling the truth is the best thing to do? I, do, I think you've done this topic too many times. It brings me down. It's what everybody is talking about. Hang on a second. Brendan, what did you want to say to Mike? I, I think it's a good thing that you're talking about it. I think that people need to realize that stuff is going down the tubes and they need to start saving. They need to, you know, spend their money wisely. You know, I, I have a job. My wife has a job. I realize that I need to, you know, buckle down on the spending. No more going out to eat. Uh, you know, start putting away a 12-month savings. I think it's a great thing that you're doing. This this guy has no clue. I thought it was being helpful, giving people a place to talk about their concerns and tell the truth. I'm yeah, just, uh, yeah, yeah this, this guy's a complete moron. I don't think he should be even, uh, you know, it, trying to hide the fact that the economy going down is just completely useless. You know, what, what do you want people to do? Sit there and pretend everything's okay and then make it get worse? I never said. I never. I never said that. What I'm saying is, people have to be more positive and not so negative. Well, well things aren't positive right now. They are negative. So you know, doesn't matter. You can do still think positive. positive. You can still think positive. Yeah, yeah, but you still got to discuss it. You know what? And the more people hear this stuff about it being negative, the the sooner they'll realize that hey, they got to get their their butt in gear and uh, start fixing their lives. When, when people start emailing back and forth, oh, the economy, the economy is so bad, it's just not helping anything. I, I, I think that people need to be more positive. It, it may not be helping them, but it'll definitely help other people who are out there. You know, me, you know, maybe you think the world's okay if you say it's okay, but, you know, you can say it's okay as much as you want, but you're, you're going to never end up with a, you know, with, with an economy that's good until people start 
you know, putting their stuff together. Thank you both. Appreciate the calls. Unbelievable. The guy wants me to lie. Wants me to lie about the economy. Oh, be more positive. What do you think about that? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Likas Show. Show. Tom Likas Show, 1 800 5800 Tom. It's our telephone number. The Tom Likas Show now heard six days a week. You'll hear us every Saturday, 2 to 6 p.m. Every Saturday, 2 to 6 p.m. And Monday through Friday from 3 to 8 p.m. as you head home on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles and also. On blowmeuptom.com, click on the Listen Live button if you can't get us on the radio. For example, if you don't live in Southern California. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to... Uh, well, no, we're trying to find out, by the way, I should remind you. We're trying to find out how bad things really are. And we do check uh, from time to time and just kind of take your pulse because things have been really bad out there. Sal on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Good. Long time, third time. Thank you. Hey, you know, listening to the comments of the last caller saying that you're really putting a negative or, you know, to the economy, you're doing the opposite. You're really telling everybody, hey, get your FU funds going. Uh, stop paying your credit cards. Um, go to school. Because if it is going to get bad... You know, you're telling them what they need to do to get ready for it. You know, I mean, that's the reality. And they want to hear what they want to hear, that, oh, everything's good, everything's fine. But they don't want to hear the truth. And in real life, hey, that's what's happening, you know, and you're really just telling it up front. You're being frank with them. But I guess some people feel good when you want to, you know, lie to them, you know, tell them what they want to hear. So I think you're doing a great job. You're I also thought that if people could uh, vent their feelings about it or hear other people venting their feelings, that it would have a good effect. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a group thinking, you know. I mean, everybody, not everyone, you know, has the same thing happen in their life. But, you know, you could sit there and go, oh, you know, I better not do that because it happened to somebody. Or I better do it this way because this may be a good idea. So I, my hat's off to you. You're doing a great job. Hey, um... Take me out the uh, Kobe style, and how about add it up with a Spanish subway theme? Okay, Sal, here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Great. <laughs> hey, you know, I I do realize there's a lot wrong with the economy right now, and uh, you know, I don't, I'm not like disbelieving that, but I think a lot of it is just people being lazy. I mean, everybody I talk to um, that says their business is doing bad. I'm a small business owner myself. I'm a plumber. I own my own uh, plumbing shop. And uh, it's fairly new, too, and I've been doing great. And it seems like everybody I talk to, they've got an excuse. You know, I say, hey, are you out there, you know, getting new accounts or doing other things? They've all got excuses why they're, you know, not out, you know, drumming up business. And uh, I just tend to think it's a lot of laziness is causing it to get worse and worse. Laziness is making it get worse? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, most people I know are trying very hard to stay employed, and if they're not employed, trying to get employed. I don't know a lot of lazy maybe people I'm right not now. Seeing, maybe I'm just not seeing that, but I'm just saying a lot of people that I talk to, it sounds like uh, they're just not working very hard, you know, at what they're doing. Well, uh, look, if the unemployment rate is that high, 
It can't just be that people are lazy. Yeah, it can't. Well, I realize that, but I think it's a big part of it. I, I don't agree with that. I, I, I believe right. that when the unemployment rate is down around 4% and you hear people complaining about not being able to find a job, then it's a result of laziness. When the unemployment rate is approaching 8 and 9 and 10%, it's not laziness anymore. Okay. Now it's snagged real hardworking people who got caught up in the unfortunate side of uh, budget cutting and layoffs and uh, uh, companies that overpaid for their assets and the employees pay the price. Sure. Well, that makes sense. And I and about this, people keep calling about they think you shouldn't talk about it. I think that's crazy. I, I thought I was. I have up, always said that I. Sense. I have always said that I talk about the issues people really care about. Now, yeah, keep it up. Right now, this is the issue people care the most about. Sure. I know. I can't believe these guys saying that. So, keep it up, Tom. You're doing a good job, buddy. John, thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. Uh, yeah, I have to agree with that last caller about, uh, you know, not denying reality and keeping our heads in the sand. There's no point to that. That's what the Republicans have been doing for the last eight years. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, I think we have a better chance of fixing this if we talk honestly about it than really? if we pretend it's not happening. And we, I say we, uh, we, we attack it uh, head on and, you know, deal with the, with the reality of it. I agree with you, and I thank you for that. Jody, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. I'm such a huge fan. Thank you. Um, well, I'm a recruiter. I've been a recruiter for about 11 years. And so I went through the whole dot-com bust. And I don't think, I mean, I, I'm not in denial that we're in a recession, but I don't think it's quite as bad as it was back then, at least not for me. Because I still have a lot of companies that are, they're still hiring and they're not going out of business. I mean, they're slower on hiring and they're not using recruiters as much. But in the dot-com bus, every single one of my clients went out of business. So it's a little bit better, I think, than it could be. For your clients? Mostly advertising agencies, which I would have thought would have gotten hit really quickly. Um, but I have a lot of advertising agencies that do pharma, for you know, do, uh, do like biotech and pharma advertising. But also I'm getting a lot in tech right now, a lot of like tech advertising. Yeah, but I, uh, you know, again, I, I think the uh, tech business uh, has always been a little out of whack with the rest of the economy uh, in one way or another. Uh, I keep hearing people on CNBC saying how much they like tech and you should buy tech stocks. And yet I don't see the tech stocks doing all that well. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't think any stocks are doing that well right now. Um, you know, and again, I'm not denying that there's a recession, but I guess on a positive note or, you know, you're just asking how bad it's been out there. You know, I, w I was really worried about this recession, obviously, and going through my last one in 01, it was horrible. But there are still companies out there, and a lot of my clients, you know, again, maybe they're not hiring right now, but they're still in business, they're still doing things, they're being conservative, but at least they're still in business and they haven't shut their doors. So I definitely take that as a positive. And as a company, the company I work for, we have 100 recruiters, and there's still people billing, you know, significant numbers. They have to work harder for it, but... People are still, you know, billing high, and, you know, you have to keep in mind that to use a recruiting firm, people are pay paying a premium for their employees. So, you know, again, on the positive note, I guess, there are still jobs out there. There are fewer and far between, but there is still hiring going on. Well, there's got to be some because, you know, we're not 25% uh, unemployed or 35% unemployed. We are 8% unemployed. True. And that means that 92% of everybody is working. No, Absolutely. All right, Jody, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Danny on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. I pushed the wrong button there. There's Danny. I'm sorry. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Yeah, I'm a big fan of your show. And uh, this is an important subject because uh, I'm 49 years old. I'm a tool and die maker, a prototype machinist. I've been doing this since uh, I was 19 years old. So I just celebrated 30 years working in this trade. And as you well know about all the farming out of jobs, et cetera, stuff like that, that it is. I live in Southern California around Pasadena, and I, I'm sure you remember that back in the days, Ronald Reagan, during the mid and the early 80s, when you'd, on a Sunday morning, would pop open the Los Angeles Times, there'd be like a 100 ads for machinists, tool and die makers, plastic injection mold, uh, draftsmen, and all 
that. I've been unemployed for seven months. In the last three years, I've been working sporadically. I work a few months here or there, get laid off. A few months here or there, get laid off. I'm on unemployment. And just in the last three or four years, because it's been so hard for me to maintain, you know, I used to have jobs where I used to make like fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year with all the overtime and stuff. With my back child support debt, it's collecting interest. I'm like something like thirty, forty thousand dollars in debt and climbing, and I'm down at the employment office every day banging out resumes. And the only phone calls I get is like that lady that talked about a recruiter. These agencies that call me up and say, "Well, we don't care about you know if you have an engineering degree. I graduated ten years ago from Cal State LA with an engineering degree. It doesn't matter." They they ask me the question, "What is the lowest you're willing to take? What is your minimum salary that you'll take to get?" get a job, and I tell them, you know what, if that's all you can ask me, just chuck my resume, because, you know, it's such an insult, but that's things, it's not how accomplished you are, it's all about uh, the flashing light on your forehead, how desperate you are, that's what we're dealing with right now. Good point, Danny, thank you for the call, it's 1-800-5800-TOM, it's Cheryl on the Tom Likas show, as we try to find out how bad it's getting out there, hello. Hi, uh, Tom. This is a first time call for me. And I just, uh, generally I think that, uh, you don't particularly like women. I get the feeling that I told the uh, person to answer the call. Why would you think that? I think you're a misogynist pig, but I think really? you're spot on on the economy. And I've been a social worker most of my life. And I think people do need to go somewhere and take their grievances and share them with others. And I think your show provides that kind of forum. And I appreciate you being spawn on, and I appreciate your honesty. And I think, for the most part, most people that are listening, whether they call in or not, they do too. And that's all I really wanted to call and say. Cheryl, thank you for the call. Come on, Tom like is 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wow. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. Checking in to find out how bad things are out there. 1-800-5800-TOM. We check with you from time to time. And say hello here to Joseph on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Um, well, I just wanted to share my sob story with everybody. Um, basically, I was working for Wachovia. Um, until about a week and a half ago, they let me go. Um, I couldn't file for unemployment because I didn't work for them long enough. Uh, and um, my roommate who I was living with just went to school in San Francisco State. Now he's gone, and I was left to pay the rent by myself. And um, <laughs> you know, I was in the back of my van. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't understand the last thing you said. <laughs> I was living in the back of my van <laughs> for about a week. And <laughs> They're going to take that away soon. <laughs> because I can't make the payments on this stupid thing. <laughs> Did you have any idea it would be like this? No, I was going to school. <laughs> my parents don't have enough money to, to pay for, to pay for my school. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no banks are hiring me. I can't get a job anywhere. I don't even have any residency. <laughs> Have you gone to see an employment counselor or uh, some professional who can uh, help you? I, the only person that I've seen so far <clears throat> was the manager of the bank. Um, <laughs> apparently, he told me that they they have some program where they can, you know, pay for my schooling, but I still have to find a way to get residency, and I don't want to tell my parents that I lost my 
<laughs> I lost my job because they're barely making it right now, too. So you're afraid of uh, making it worse for them by telling them what happened? <laughs> I'm supposed to be helping them. <laughs> I'm supposed to be helping them, Tom. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so where are you at today? Well, right now I'm in the back of my van, and I have the radio turned on, and you just started talking about it, I... I kind of laughed at first because, you know, I thought, well, a few weeks ago I was listening to you talk about the same topic, and I said, at least I have my job, you know. Yeah. I, I said, at least I have my job, and I always felt bad for the callers who would call in, you know, losing their jobs, but I didn't think it was going to happen to me. That's, that's why I keep bringing this up, because uh, I know, as I said at the beginning of this hour, there are many people out there who think I'm crazy to do this show, talk about this subject. They've got jobs. You heard the guy earlier this hour saying it's just a bunch of lazy people out there. But but I know that's not what it is. No, and when I, when I went, <laughs> the other day I tried to apply it at four banks just around the area and they all looked at me like I was like I was some loser when I, when I couldn't give any proof of residency. They're like the guy was asking me, he goes, So well, where do you live? And I I didn't know how to answer that question. I I said, Well, I'm I'm you know, I'm here and there, you know, like <laughs> what am I supposed to say? All right, let me let me help you at least with that. That that I can help you with. I want you to go to like a UPS store, okay? I want you to get a box, the smallest box they have. You can rent a box. And with that box, you'll get a street address. Take the box number, and instead of saying box number, when you give an address, just put number, number 614 or whatever. And then when you yeah. apply for a job, that's going to look like you live in an apartment. Okay. And you can receive mail there. And at least that gives the appearance that you, you know, have a place to live and have a place to receive notices and a place to receive mail. So at least that gives you a starting point. <laughs> yeah. Now, if I were you... I'd lay it on the line with my parents and tell them the truth because you don't want them to find out, you know, to become really dependent upon you and find out down the line. I'm sure your parents have been through hard times at some point in their lives themselves. That's why they're now depending on you. I'm sure they'll understand they're your parents. You know, and I think you'll feel better to be able to talk about it with your parents. So that my daddy, he, he was so proud of me, you know. I got accepted to uh, Chow Islands University here by Oxnard, you know. Yeah. And he was so proud, and he said, you know, you're going to be the first in our family, you know, who's going to get his master's and all of this. And I said, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm not going to come back here without one, right? <laughs> and that's, uh, that was the last discussion I had with him. And Well, you know, you could have walked out the door and been hit by a tsunami, and that would uh, change your plans for the day. Right. Um, you had the best intentions, and you worked hard, and you're going to continue to work hard. Yeah, I, I will. But I think everybody out there knows how bad the economy is, and that this is happening to lots of people. You heard the story I read at the beginning of the hour. How many people are out of work? Yeah. How many people were laid off? That's a big number. <laughs> it's not just you. 
So I would say, don't try to hide this from your parents. Let them know how hard times are for you. They're having a hard time, too, and you can all talk about it together. And that's really one of the great things about having a family. That's true, yeah. All right. Thank you, Tom. I'll be here, Joseph. Call me if you need me. Thank you. Okay. Wow. So for all the people out there who say it's just lazy people or why are you talking about this, that's why I talk about this. That's why. I'm not imagining how bad things are out there. I'm not. You see, no matter what I have today, I grew up dirt poor. I know what it is to suffer. I know what it is to go hungry, and I know what it is to, to worry about being able to pay the bills or worry about your parents being able to pay the bills. I know. And I look around me, and it doesn't look good. Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Great. Great, sir. I'm just calling to let you know that, the, uh, first and foremost, I want to mention something about that last caller, that, that this is how bad it's getting. I mean, for, for that guy to break down and, and, and tell his story to you, and, and I mean, that's, that's, that's bad. I mean, I'm, I'm 22, I'm young, and I'll tell you, you know, I, I'm working my butt off to try and survive. You know, I, I was a supervisor at my last job. I got laid off. Uh, I took a four dollar pay cut. You know, I have a job. Pe people need to realize that, um, like you said, you know, it's, it's not lazy people, Tom. It's not. I mean, people are trying to get jobs. It's just no one's hiring. I mean, I resorted to, and I'll tell everyone on the air, uh, I resorted to trying to apply at McDonald's. M McDonald's is not hiring. You know what I mean? So, so people need to to, to relax and and look at you, and they should be thanking you, you know. That caller a while ago telling you that, you know, you shouldn't be talking about it, you should lie, you know, anything like that, that's that's false. You know, you're doing us a favor. Talk about it once, talk about it a hundred times, a thousand times. Every time that you talk about it, you're going to be right. And and people need to realize that. And, and again, you know, I work and, and work and work and work. I work 12-hour shifts. So many people do, Joe. The Tom Likas Show.